From away to x-ray without cheating to enchanting TNT, these are 28 genius Minecraft tricks you didn't know. It takes two and a half minutes for your hunger to run out when she starts sprinting. But what if I told you that you could run forever? All you have to do is hit an entity after you start sprinting and your hunger will never run out. Why did Mojang patch this? I'm going to show you a magic trick by making all of these mobs disappear. Unfortunately, this magic was a lie. Just like when my mom said she loves me. Anyways, you can do the exact same thing by propelling yourself into the sky with elytra and fireworks. The best part is that this works in every single dimension, including the nether. Only noobs use ladders to pff, climb. Real pros use honey blocks instead. If you place water between honey blocks like this, you can climb up much faster than any ladder. Honey block one, ladder zero. Are you tired of dealing with TNT at the bottom of desert temples? Well, you're missing out on how useful it actually is. By being sneaky enough and avoiding the pressure plate, you can dig straight down to the TNT and and make it blow up! This instantly breaks all the chests and saves you tons of precious time. If you're tired of X-rayers stealing items, you'll love this one. When placing down a chest, surround it with a low tier ore like coal. This makes it so that anyone who wants to grief you is never gonna find your treasures. The biggest problem with boats is that they are incredibly slow. That's why I use dolphins! Wait, let me explain! Usually, boats can only cover a few blocks per second at most, but by using a lead to attach yourself to a dolphin, you can cover nearly 40 blocks a second. This is a huge help in locating ocean monuments and shipwrecks since you don't have to deal with the barely see-through water surface. Not only that, you can now become an Olympic dolphin rider too. Doors are the stupidest thing to exist in Minecraft. I mean, why even have them when you can straight up glitch through walls? Just run into a corner with a boat or dispense yourself through the wall. Wait, how do I get back in? If there's one thing that's important to Minecraft, it's your time. And who has the time to waste taming these stupid horses? Instead of taming them with normal food, you should use gold golden apples. With only 10 golden apples, your horsey is gonna go from fiend to friend. 8 gold blocks for one horse? Definitely worth it. The way most players use potions is completely wrong, since they throw it at their feet. Doing this usually decreases the duration of the potion by a minute or two, whereas throwing it into the sky onto your head will give you the full amount. But Mello, when does this happen? Do I look like a coda to you? There are only 128 strongholds in an entire Minecraft seed, and if you dig block by block, you have a 1 in 23,000 420 chance of finding one. Yeah, that's insane. So, let's look at how to bypass this insane probability without using eyes of ender. All you have to do is trap yourself in a one by one hole and put a gravity block like gravel above your head. Bear this up with Optifine and you'll be able to see for miles. Although, you might not want to do this trick with an anvil. You might have already known that lava is the best item to use for smelting. But with auto crafters, this trend is about to change very fast. With this insane contraption that Ray's work set up, it turns out that kelp is far superior to any other smelting item in the game. By using a flying machine, you can automatically harvest kelp and pass it through a smoker to turn it into dried kelp. The crafters can turn these into dried kelp blocks, with each block smelting 20 items. This is so overpowered! I love emeralds, but finding them is incredibly difficult. However, there is a way to get an infinite supply of them by literally using dirt. Turn three of these bad boys into mud by using water and use a dripstone to turn them into clay. Now you've found yourself an infinite money glitch when trading with the stonemason. Most players eat a steak even if their hunger bar goes down by a single point. Doing this is super dumb and can even get you killed. The correct way to eat is actually to start with foods that restore low amounts of hunger, like carrots, and then move on to items like meat. This is because every food item in the game has a saturation value, which is the time it will take to have a hunger bar reduced. By doing this, you will never go hungry again. There's actually a secret way to breathe underwater without using a helmet enchanted with respiration. Everyone knows by now that you can play a door on the bottom of the ocean to make an air bubble. But if you only have blocks on you, one of the easiest options is to place a few like this, and then place a piece of sand in the middle, giving you an air bubble to breathe in. The other option is to build a conduit. That's gonna make you go bankrupt. Another massive mistake that many players make is mining obsidian directly after pouring water on lava. While it's easy to avoid, most die because of this. But I've got just a solution for you. Next time, pour water on a nearby block to solidify the new layer of lava. It's that simple. There's only one thing that's harder than bedrock? Boats! By placing boats under mobs, you can immobilize them completely. They become completely docile and will look at you even if you try to murder them. Who knew an enderman's worst enemy was some wood? However, this isn't even the best part. If you trap a creeper and sit inside the boat, you will take a total of zero damage. How is this even allowed? For years, people have been using clutches like the water bucket and holding down certain movement keys. But there's a much more overpowered way of doing this by using powdered snow. This is much better than water. 
which will usually waterlog leaves. However, not only that, you can climb upwards by wearing leather boots. So even if you have two snow blocks, they're enough to get you out of any hole. Do you want to hide items from your friends? Easiest method to do so by far is to attach hoppers to grass paths. Once items drop onto these, they will disappear completely. Wait, so this is where villagers hide all their loot. Slumberfied piglins are the most annoying mob to deal with in the game, mainly because you get an army of them chasing you even if you hit one accidentally. The fix for this is surprisingly easy though. All that's required is a weapon strong enough to one-shot the piglins. Even if it's a stone axe to smite five, it'll do the job. But if you're a real baller, you could even use the netherite sword. Curing villagers can be an incredibly boring and tedious task, but with this technique, you can cure them all the while you abuse, ahem, <coughs> heal them. This is possible if you enchant a crossbow with piercing four and use a tipped arrow of weakness. While you might feel uh, inhumane doing this, it's much better than the old-fashioned way of using weakness potions. Plus, the arrow can be reused as many times as you want. You might already know that fireworks make you go as fast as Sonic on an elytra. But if you want to troll your friends, give them a fireworks star since it looks exactly like a normal firework and deals damage too. Maybe you'll even see them light up the night sky with their body. It's time you stop using diamonds to craft items directly. Ever since the 1.20.2 update, diamonds are now 65% more common, which means finding them is going to be really easy. We can leverage this to trade with toolsmiths to get to emeralds and then use these to buy tools. More often than not, the tools you buy will already come enchanted, which saves you a ton of suffering rather than if you made it normally. This is one of my most favorite strategies to ever exist. Most players already know that endermen are three blocks tall and can easily be trapped. But did you know the same applies to wither skeletons? They are 2.4 blocks tall, meaning if you place blocks at exactly the right position, you can now become a skeleton killing machine. It is a massive misconception that crops need to be in direct contact with water to grow well. In reality, a water source can allow crops within four blocks of it to grow. This means with just one block of water, you can grow 16 crops. Respawn anchors are one of the most useful items that have been added to Minecraft. There's only one downside. You can only respawn a few times and might often forget to recharge it. But there's an easy way to fix this by placing a dispenser filled with glowstone facing towards the respawn anchor and attaching two observers facing each other. You can set up this observer clock that constantly recharges your respawn anchor. Whenever you build your house, never use full blocks for flooring. This is because most slabs have a much larger blast resistance than normal blocks and could make the difference between you sleeping in your bed or your entire house being blown up into pieces. Something that you never knew was that TNT is affected by weapon enchantments. For example, if you use a flame enchanted bow to light up a block of TNT with a looting item in your offhand, you can farm tons of drops instantly. This can be especially useful in farming music discs. What do you think is the best way to find ancient cities? Dig straight down like a noob? Noob! Ancient cities always generate at any level of minus 52 and are most likely to be found under a mountain. All the armor trims are mine! Wait, no. Ah! Subscribe before he gets me!